okay. this model. Yes. So first of all, can you introduce yourself to our users? Absolutely. Hello, I'm Scott War. I am the producer on the Lollipop Chainsaw. Okay. So, uh, the game looks great. It's fantastic. <laughs> I love it from you and new uh, Can you tell me something about the story behind the game? Absolutely. more in deep about it. Absolutely. So the story behind the game where Suda basically came to Warner Brothers um, and he had this idea. He had this cheerleader with a decapitated head on her waistband um, and rainbows coming out of the zombies with blood squirting everywhere and says, Warner Brothers, I need your help. <laughs> I need your help with the writing. Um, and, and here's my basic ideas. Can you make a story out of this? And my whole thought was like, yeah, I know the perfect person, but I wasn't sure, you know, one, if we could reach out to him, or two, if he would be available or want, want to do this. We tried anyways. We, we reached out to James Gunn, and in my mind, he was the perfect match, where he does crazy, you know, movies that just make and twist your heart. Um, and to suit his gameplay style, where it's just all, what the heck is going on? Uh, the both of them loved each other. They knew they were fans of each other. James is a gamer, knew Suda's games, Suda's fan of James movies. You know, and from there we get this story. And the story is definitely, you know, it's a James written story with a Suda stamp of approval. Um, you know, they worked together on this and very hard and making sure that you know the jokes came off as Suda. You know, was like, okay, I get it um, and loved it. Um, but there is a story, um, and there's a story about a girl that is just having her 18th birthday that just had to decapitate her boyfriend, and now she's having to deal with that while her boyfriend is now dealing with becoming a decapitated head. And so there's a, a love story in there, you know, where the relationships will go up and down. On top of that, there is this classmate, Swan, that is just completely angry at the world um, and just mad and truly really has no idea why this guy is just, you know, out to mess up Sam Romero, um, you know, and then try to kill her. You know, she's completely dumbfounded and doesn't understand, you know. She is a very well-liked person at school. Everybody knows her, um, you know, on the flip side. Uh, when she's a zombie hunter, she's very strong. So there is a lot of different layers on top of that. Now, if you add in the James Gunn twist to it, there is definitely going to be its crazies up and downs as well. You took uh, some particular inspiration for the character design, for the level design, or something like that. Um, repeat just one. Minute. You take uh, some particular inspiration from films, movies, uh, serial TV, or books yeah. for the level design, for the character design. Uh, yeah, the, for the level design, the visuals, the you know, even just down to the character models and and the bosses. You know, there is influences and an homage basically to a lot of people that has been influential to both Suda and James. You know, scattered throughout the entire game. You know, we have the O'Bannon farm. To you know, shout outs to Professor Campbell. You know, there there's even a little uh, clip in there about running zombies, you know, there's funny things and elements all over the game where, you know, it is. Um, the comic book feel, you know, uh, was something that just kind of happened um, throughout the progression of the game, and I loved it. Um, I didn't know if it was on purpose, and of course I asked Suda, and he's just like, ah, you know, give me a runaround answer, but I know it's because we all read comic books, we're all comic book fans, you know, and, and love comics, and so that look and feel is exactly what, you know, I believe Suda was aiming <laughs> for. I know for me, like, it definitely represents this whole game and everything that I love about zombies, about, you know, uh, different people that have been involved with zombies throughout, you know, both in movies and in games, and then now we have Lollipop Chainsaw. Okay. Let's see during the demo that there are some particular elements. Uh, for example, you have to choose if you want to save or not the the boys and the girls in the school. Yep. But there will be also some other secondary uh, elements, uh, not uh, including the in the main story. For example, secondary mission or uh, collect tables or something like that. Yes, yeah. the game is just filled and littered with uh, collectibles unlockables, even, you know, outfits to music to art to, you know, abilities, attributes, you know, uh, you can make Juliet stronger, you can give her more moves to use, um, and for the exploration around in the game, you know, it definitely, there's mini games everywhere, you know, there's all these like little areas 
off the beaten path where you can kind of explore and do just some crazy, insane stuff. Uh, today, you know, with the stripper pool, or I wouldn't say the stripper pool, I would say, you know, the pool that Juliet uses to swing around on and cut zombies in half. There's other spots that are just even more on top of that, you know, that, that go above and beyond. So there is a lot of areas where you can go to. Um, there, It is you know, a very linear game straightforward. This is what we wanted. We wanted to tell a story through the gameplay, um, you know, and, but on top of that, there is lots of other things to do and collect. Come back from the chat. Do you want to redo that question? Just because of the whole, there's reference in the whole thing. It's up to you. No, really, it's fine. I think it's yeah, fine. It's okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, because I, I already backed up. I'm fine. So, again, we can say that there will be some different chainsaw, for example, and um, you can upgrade. I see the shotgun, for example, is a shotgun, yeah? Yeah. <laughs> we call it the chainsaw blaster, but yeah, it's a, it's a shotgun. <laughs> or, and you can upgrade your chainsaw with new uh, weapon, or is this So there's a chainsaw, there's a shotgun, there's. A, yeah, so the evolution of the chainsaw, um, you know, the main focus on this game was the chainsaw action. And we wanted that to be first and foremost. However, it doesn't mean that it doesn't evolve. And it will evolve through game progression rather than being able to go and purchase it. You know, if you're doing the sparkle hunting, collecting zombie medals and buying them at store, the chainsaw will evolve throughout the story. So it will transform into, with in addition to uh, being a chainsaw, will be a shock. Uh, what we call a chainsaw blaster. It will also be used as a writing mechanic, so what we call chainsaw dash, where Juliet puts it in front and speeds along, so it's kind of a dash, and, and many other uses. It, so it's not just a strictly a chainsaw, it does morph into other things. Okay. Uh, in the final version of the game, there will be some different uh, difficult levels, and how influences the gameplay? Yeah, absolutely. So the difficulty throughout the game, um, one of the things, just working with so many awesome people, Suda definitely wanted newcomers to Suda's games to have a fun experience. First and foremost, it's always about fun. Um, you know, when you play a game, you want to have fun. Um, and this game is definitely not one to be taken seriously, so there is no serious elements to it. So it's more on the fun side. Um, so on the easier difficulties, you know, you can hack and slash and get through a lot of the game because that's the way it was intended. However, we know that there's hardcore pseudo fans. Um, we know that there's the ones that is like, oh, you know, I, I'm going to get right into it. I'm going to master this and go. And it just goes up from there because the bosses will evolve. They'll get stronger, not only stronger and cheap, <laughs> where you know they're just doing more damage and costing you more life. They actually use different abilities. There's different patterns or different um, ways that you have to defeat them than on the earlier difficulties. On top of that, there's an entire other mode where you have to go through and you take everything that you learned from the story and are challenged based upon that all the way up until where you're playing through the entire game and if you die once you have to start all the way back over. So it encompasses the very easy end all the way to the extreme where it's just one life. You know, you die, you're done. Okay. Uh, I saw uh, during the presentation that the boss fight was very long. Sometimes, yeah, yeah three, four different evolution. Yeah. <laughs> but I'm wondering if you uh, lose your life uh, during the second transformation, the third transformation, you have to come back to the first one and replay the fight every time, or there's something like the checkpoint every transformation of the... Yeah, for the boss fights, you know, this is where Suda is very passionate about, and he's very particular on the way that he wants the bosses to behave, and so you never know. You because know, I play so, so could, Shadow of the Dead. <laughs> and, 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 and you know that it's multiple. Yeah. Absolutely. You never know if it's going to die on the first time, or, you know, the sixth or seventh time. You just don't understand, you know, because they just keep on coming back. Um, there is no checkpoints, um, but there are other abilities that will allow you to... Um, stay safe so okay. let's say like a continue of sorts i don't want to give it all away yeah, yeah. <laughs> but there are ways to make sure that you know if you do come close to you know dying or if you are defeated during a particularly long battle uh there is ways to make sure that you're you're okay even up to the hardest difficulties there are still ways that you can not get totally screwed if you're on the last section of a boss okay uh, i know that 
in, you probably know that there are a lot of third person action game like this one in the market. Uh, I know that Lollipop Chainsaw is really different from the other one, <laughs> but if you have to suggest the game to our users or for the people, what your main, your focus element for the game that people can like, they can we like in the game? You know, uh, a lot of this is 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 either story driven or gameplay driven. You know, it's definitely a zombie game. You know, so if you're a fan of zombies, you know, like, you know, it's a different experience for zombies though. You know, where Shadow. Uh, uh, Resident Evil, uh, you know, even like in Silent Hill ways, you know, they're more a survival horror, Left for Dead and stuff like that. Whereas we're, we're not so much a survival horror, but we do love the zombie genre. Um, we are huge zombie fans. We're huge horror fans. Um, and so, you know, anything that's dealing with uh, a horror element, if you're a horror fan and you like to see that twisted, demented, or you got that through our story and James. If, if you like that twisted sense while playing a game, then you definitely have that with Suda. So, you know, you have, uh, you know, games that we've looked up to, you know, and, and looked at, you know, it was like Bayonetta, you know, where it's constant action and we love the action in that game. You know, whereas, you know, the, the survivability in, in Resident Evil and moving forward, we, we love those type of games. And so you can see that there is lots of love for this type of game, you know, whereas the East, you know, in Japan, visions, you know, and western uh, portions, you know, injected all over, you know, through Suda. Okay. The last one is about the really after the release, the game, and then wondering if you have uh, playing to support the game after the release with some DLC, or you don't think about that? Yeah, right now, right uh, now. We, we don't have any DLC plans, and the reason being is, you know, we had a lot of thought. I mean, being a fan of games and being a gamer, um, you know, all of us, you know, James, Suda, myself, and Grasshopper, you know, we're all gamers. We, we love video games, and we love um, lots of collectibles, lots of things, you know, to make us happy. And I think within Lollipop Chainsaw, we definitely hit that mark. You know, I'm, I'm myself personally impressed with the amount of content that we get, you know, right out of the box. And that's why we're not having any thought right now on, on DLC, because there is a lot to experience just from the first go. Perfect. Awesome. <laughs> Thank you very much. Thank you very much for your time. Thank you for having me. Great t-shirt as well. I really like it. It's really yeah. cool. It's nice. Yeah, it's wicked. I bought that in London. It looks like a website. <laughs> <laughs> uh, the Banksy. You know Banksy? Yeah, 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 yeah. Cool. All right. Uh, let's get it. Okay.